Hello there and welcome to my arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela and amongst other things I'm an artist and I love to encourage people to just draw and create just for the pleasure of it, just because we can. Being human means that we're creative and we can it's, I find it such a relaxing thing to do. Even when I'm working for a contract, I still enjoy the process of drawing, even though there's a double-edged sword with that because I get very anxious that I'm not going to do a good enough job. But when it comes to working in sketchbooks or just work like this morning, it's just some warm-up art before I turn my attention to the rest of the day, hopefully, um, there's a sense of relaxation and peace that comes with it. And... And that peace is there, regardless of what's going on in the world around us. I can just breathe and find pleasure in that process of creation and doing, well, I like to create pretty things, often non-representational, or if they look like something, it's often very stylized and whimsical. So if you're here and you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It helps get my channel shared with other people so that others like you can find here. And if you do enjoy a video, um, even a little bit, you don't have to be ecstatically joyous, please consider giving a thumbs up. And of course I welcome comments, suggestions, things you'd like to see or me do, or feedback on what you're doing. And I love to see any art that you create with what I do as an inspiration. So if you share it on social media, tag me or um, the best place to send me a direct message is through Facebook Messenger, but not my Facebook page, but through my through my main Facebook account. And that I'll link that in the description. I always put where you can find me or on Instagram or Twitter. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I Twitter about all kinds of things, but often just use it to show my art. Anyway, yesterday... Or the last video, it depends on when you watched it. Um, it's yesterday to me. Today's Saturday the 11th of June. I was working on this kind of idea of creating um, a sort of a sampler with a kind of very boxy kind of, um, I think in Zentangle terms you'd call it a string, but I'd call it a series of frames. And I realised I do this in... Um, the colouring book art that I do from time to time where I have like um, a page full of almost like little portraits and other motifs to fill in gaps and spaces and so on and each one with something different in and this was the first one I did in my um, a couple of days ago and I although I like it the colours don't really I, I do struggle with colour I, I really really do this is the one that I was working on in my last video and I've completed it in the sense that I've added colour to all of the sections. This one I toned down quite a bit and I picked some of the colours up here and here but I'm still not happy with the colour. Um, little white dots have been added and shadow and so on and I kept to a pretty limited palette. I've used blue greys and neutral greys um, right the way along and I quite like what I've done here with this is the um, gradually getting darker as we go towards the black as well as having that drop shadow underneath. I did add a tiny bit of off-white colour to the mushrooms. I just felt they needed something there. And I've brought out the ripples and folds, hopefully, in, in that bit of diva dance. So there's those two. You know, I do like to use shadow and highlight just to bring things out. Um, and this, then, is the one that I showed yesterday that I'd finished drawing but I hadn't added any colour to. And I just went back and decided, right, I'm just going to use these blue greys. So I, I got out some of the darker ones so I could really go quite dark um, and intense and give that feeling of shadow. This one, I think these spaces could even go darker, but I can always do that another time. The only thing I did to this panel was just put a hint of shadow around the edge. That's all, as if there's a frame there shadowing it from light. And um, with the diva dance, I did put those little dots in. And I have put little dots in places. Oh, and the one, where was the one yesterday? This one, I did draw little white diamonds inside. And I neaten those up with a micron pen. And the same here. 
I um, adjusted those and I put filled this in black and put little white dots in the those circles I used to draw Huggins there. So with that in mind, I thought it would be quite nice today because I'm not feeling too wonderful. I've had a really rubbish night's sleep. I've had a really, really lots of um, lower abdominal pain. It's, yeah, <coughs> I'll just say email things, I think. And it woke me up, not quite in screaming agony, but enough to wake me up and make it uncomfortable for me. So I'm hoping I'll get some work done for, um, oh, what we could, it's not fantastic, it's not fabulous. Fanciful Birds, the Fanciful Birds book. But um, I, just having a drink, trying to come around and it's nearly nine o'clock in the morning. I've had very broken night's sleep, so I'll see how I get on. I've got a whole host of pens out with me today. I've got this piece of paper, which is, um, it's just a piece of the sea white all media paper that I've coloured with distress inks. Um, I've got, I did have a stash of them. I've used most of them now, so I'm going to have to find time to make some more to pop in my stash. But I've got a couple of um, flexible nib pens, food day pens. This is my Tombow, which has got a hard nib. This um, is a zebra and it's got quite a broad nib. And I thought that might be nice for drawing the frames or the edges. But failing that, I also have some microns here. I've got an 08, an 03 and an 01, all in black. I've got an 01 brown in the hopes that it'll work. I've also got a couple of Zig writers and I've chosen a reddish brown one and a sort of like um, dusky blue, I, I think it's denim colour. I've also got these kinds of colours in a couple of Sarasa um, gel pens from Zebra. And I haven't got a comparable brown in the Moonlights. I don't like the darker brown for this, but I have got a pale blue Jelly Roll Moonlight, a pale grey one, and I've got a white one. I've also got a black alcohol marker. I've got other alcohol markers that are easy to hand if I decide to add any shading today. And I'm going to stick most probably to blue greys because I've got a particular fondness for them. And of course you can't see all of these, can you? So there's, there's the plethora of pens I've got out to work with. Ah, aha, uh -huh. I can see why. I can see why my Micron pen has dried out or mostly dried out. It's because the um, barrel's cracked. That's not good, so that can go out. That's why that, that'll be useless then, because what little ink there is in the nib will dry out soon enough. That's a shocker, I wonder how that happened. Oh, and I have a pencil and I have a ruler and I've got a piece of scrap paper so I can check line thicknesses and so on, because that's how we rock and roll. Well, how I rock and roll. I just wanted to try this one to see how thick it is. Actually, I quite like that. Where's the 08 micron? It's this one. It's a little bit thicker than the 08, so I think I'll go with that because I do want to separate these into boxes. And I've already, I've already done some where I've put some horizontal lines and layers in um, because I'm going to work on this portrait today. So I'm going to just separate these. I'm going to use the grid on here just to line this up so that I can get my lines nicely perpendicular, hopefully. There's no guarantee of that. And if they're not, I don't mind that they aren't because I can and I will create some odd shapes here because there's no harm in doing that. I'll go back to the next one and perhaps almost like I've cut an object in half, but that'll be fine. Put a narrow one there and perhaps a narrow one at the edge. I'm not measuring these, I'm just kind of eyeballing them. So that if I decide that I want to um, do anything, uh, you know, if, if lines go a bit wobbly and so on, because I'm not going to use a ruler to draw these um, shapes in. No, definitely not. Ruler? Drawing with a pen. 
What I like about flexible nib pens is that I can vary the thickness of the line. And when I do this as I draw, and let, let the pen skip around a little bit and make the line uneven, it takes away that pressure of having things to be too perfect. So I've got a nice little box there and I'm going to leave a gap between them. Which I think will be just nice. So I'm going to do all of these first before I turn my attention to anything else. But part of me is thinking it'd be nice not just to put lots of different patterns in here. But if I choose a pattern or a motif to go in a box, perhaps motifs I'll do singly. Perhaps not variations on them or perhaps there will be variations of them across there. But I thought that with um, tangle patterns, it'd be nice to put variations of the patterns in here as well. Whether I use different colours or do the explorations. I just think it might be a nice structured way of doing that. Possibly. And part of me is thinking, oh, wouldn't it be lovely if I had, <coughs> excuse me, stencils made with, um, these patterns of boxes on so I can just draw inside them and have almost like, you know, a range of them so I can have a variation. Be useful if I ever do a book. To look into whether I can have things like that made and how expensive they would be. Now I was thinking here, because I can be a bit dim, that I wanted to separate some of these into smaller sections but um, it's not going to happen today. I should have should have drawn those lines in in pencil as well because I'm better at doing things as I think. So I'm going to have a look very quickly because I haven't got a clue what patterns I want to use. Oh, I've just seen a, a flower I haven't done. Well, there's lovely. So I am going to have a look at it. It's called Puffin Flower, P-U-F-A-N Flower, all one word. And it's by Yuru Chen. There we are. I'm looking on, ta on my Pinterest. So if you want to look at that, it will be in my, I think it's the 01 Tangle Patterns board. Or One Tangle Patterns. I've got lots of Tangle Pattern boards there because there's a ridiculous number of patterns. So I'm going to choose to pop one of these. And again, I'm, I'm now regretting inking these boxes in. I am, because I could have had them spilling out. But because I'm new to this particular flower, it starts with a circle there, like this. And then you pop two circles in like this. And I may just Actually, where's my, I had, I do have here. I'm having a day already. I can see I'm going to do really well at whatever I do today. If I start a bit further down, then I can get one of these flowers in and perhaps a second one in. Let me have a look and pop another one in like that. Nice big. There we go. And I'm going to ink this in. I'm going to use an 03 pen, I think. Though I think an 05 might have been better. So let me get my Tombow here because I can get a finer line with this. I'm going to start by drawing the circles in and I'm going to draw these in but not outside of the line. I'm just going to have them 
as if they, you know, we've taken a, a picture and cut some edges off or we've cropped a photograph. But I think there's enough information here to replicate these flowers. I'm just going to pop the stems in. And I am making the stems thicker on the left hand side. I'm also going to go back and thicken the lines on the, the circular part there, but also the bottom and the left of the petals. It's the bottom and a little bit of the left that's there. The left and the bottom, because that adds some dimension. And then I will find my O1, which is here. Now I could, I am going to do this, I think, in black, shall I? Or shall I do that in, no, I will do it in black. And I'm going to have lines that start fairly straight from the centre but then start to echo or mimic the shape of the petal, but always coming back towards the centre. So they give the idea that this petal has some volume. So on that one, I've made the line solid. On this one, I'm going to break the lines. which give that little central area a touch of lightness. If I line them up, the broken bits, then it's almost like you get um, a shaped highlight or it helps to you know, try to get them across here in a kind of arc and here in an arc to emphasize that puffy shape. So I quite like that as it is. I do think this would benefit perhaps from being coloured in, in black with that little highlight. So it looks like a little bead there. And I'll just very quickly draw one here. So if I start with this, then you have the petals loop, you have the stem. And then you can embellish the stem. We could add leaves or little things at the bottom. You could have bits growing out the top. However you want them. So that's quite a nice thing to do. So I, I just realised I'm hoping that I'm on camera. Mm -hmm. I have to check that. But there we are. So that's my first one. And I think I might just add some circles, clusters of them, perhaps. Like this. Just to add some interest there. So that's my first little box done. So something like that. So I just think it's nice to, to have things that are perhaps just a little bit different. So let me have a look at tanglepatterns.com. Let's see what patterns we've got going on here. There's some lovely ones. There's one called Graticula by Lucy Farron. And I can see that it's going to be the one. It's beautiful. It's going to be one that's going to seriously vex me. Um, so we've got any at the top that would be really lovely. I don't know. It's so hard when I'm looking for things at times. Sometimes there's just, do you get overwhelmed by choice? And that overwhelming is just way too much. Because I do often. I'll tell you what I'm going to do in this one. Is I'm going to do and zeppel. But cra crazy and zeppel, and zeppel, and -E It is a 
tangle pattern from Zen Tangle themselves. And I really like it. It ends up a bit like crazy paving in a way. But you can make sections as large or as small as you want. Um, I'm just adding lines until I feel I've broken this space up as I would like it to be broken up. And I think I'm just going to break some of these spaces a little bit like that. So I am using pencil to do this because uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. And I am going to find... I'm going to use an O3 for this one because my O1 pen is a little bit scratchy on this paper, but I think the O3 will work. And what you have to do is in the corners, instead of following the line around the corners, you have to curve it around. So we get a lovely series of curvy, almost like cobblestones. And because they've got curved corners, There will be gaps between them. Now, I, I haven't touched these two together, but I will just go back and join them like that. These spaces you can leave empty or you can colour black. I've coloured, I'm going to colour the ones along the edge in black, but I might leave the ones that aren't on the edge and un coloured in. But there's just something lovely about this. Now, I know that the original or the, the Zentangle way of drawing patterns is to draw those lines in pen. But I, today, I definitely feel the need for some pencil being used those lines. I would think I want them to disappear so that I have these distinct spaces between. These particular, um, say they do remind me of cobblestones or um, old fashioned walls that were made from uneven stones. I'm just taking my time. I'm often a very fast um, drawer. And I do draw very quickly and I'm aware of that. But today is a day for drawing and slowing things down just a tad. So I'll fill that in, that in there. I'm only filling in the ones that touch the outside edge. So it's like the black is beginning to flow in, but can't get any further in. Keep the dark outside and the light inside, is what I say. Which sounds quite philosophical. There we go, so we've got this little bit there and there. And there's my Enzeppel. I really like that as a pattern. And I think I might do Enzeppel in one of these, but perhaps a little bit more on the organised side. And perhaps I'll take the angle here. So I've taken the angle of this line and I've gradually decreased that angle until, you know, we next one would be practically vertical. So I'm playing with an idea of bending lines or bending, um, changing the size of areas to create an illusion. And I think I could do a better job of that if just have this let me re-raise that line because these ones at the bottom would be quite big the next ones would be a little bit smaller the next ones would be smaller too and the ones at the top would be the smallest so let's see how that works I'm 
This is perhaps a little bit too much on the organised size or organised um, nature for me as in now those are a little bit bigger than the row below but I'll I'll live with that for now and perhaps these ones I can make a little bit smaller so that the row above is a teeny bit bigger than these Teeny bit bigger, teeny bit smaller. And then the row at the very top is the smallest of all. So it almost does look like it's fading off into the distance that way. And I think with this one I will fill. Have a look. We'll definitely fill the gaps in round the edge. And that also gives me a chance to adjust shapes and spacings and so on. To sculpt the lines. To use a Zentangly term. And I think for this one, I think I'm going to need to fill these ones in. They look, this one looks wrong with them left open, but this one isn't so bad but I think I might go back to this one and fill those in with um, a coloured pen this is very stark with black it's very you know it's high contrast to say the least and the only thing I'll do with these is um, adding shade shadow and highlight was here I think I may fill these in with pen I think I'm going to go with the blue this done in blue. And before I do that though, I do want to erase the pencil lines because I know that once you put pen and stuff on, it can be difficult to erase the pencil lines. Right, yeah, that's the finer end. If I don't like this colour, I can always go back and just colour this in black. But I think I'll quite like this because I know the shadows I'll put on will be lighter than this. But if I need a darker colour, then I'll use a darker one in these sections. Whether it's a darker blue-grey. Just think. It adds some depth to the pattern. It adds that shadow in between these. But it's not quite as high contrast as the other ones. So it's nice to have that as a comparison. And this is what things like this are for, I think. It is that kind of comparing um, yeah it's getting that comparison going is looking at things and going yeah okay I like that I don't like that I've just caught out the corner of my eye um, a little pattern that I think will be quite nice to do I haven't done this one before so this one's going to be interesting it's called dorsal and it's been deconstructed by Anita Asporo Uh, it's, it's called dorsal. I can't make out because the picture is not very good. It's Anita A. And I think I think my Westies Westin A W. I don't know what the the last two are. So, but let's have a look at this. So I'm going to start by drawing. A channel on either side. Now there is a section down the middle where there's a gap like so and I'm also going to draw these in as narrowish rectangles separating this. So this is going to be interesting and the way you start is I'm going to alternate double lines like this. So I've never drawn this before, so I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. I think I want to take this up to about here and then, is it? 
Um, I've done that a bit wrong. Will it work upside down? No, can't get my head round it. I've started at the wrong end of these, so these should be going like this, like this, like this. And then it's these, then you connect to the top like this, like this. Yeah, oh, that's okay, we'll get it. Up, down, down, down. Brilliant, got it. Bit of a mis misalignment there, but it'll be fine. And then the central bit here is where we add colour. So all of this needs to be coloured in, which means it's time for a bigger pen. It's interesting, we started with dotted lines almost, like a double stitch, it's a double stitched line. And they've become all one now, how we've joined them together. I quite like this pattern. I know that it's going to be interesting to add shadow to because um, it's almost like we have some flaps sticking up here. These, the plain ones. I haven't drawn it very well. As I said, it's the first time I've drawn this one. And I've made, I think I've made some of these angles or these, these slopes just that little bit too big. So what I'm, so I, you know, too much of a sweep, I think, or not, not too big a space between the dotted lines that could have been smaller, but they'll be fine. And I think that will be lovely with that sh shadow along the edge. We'll just bring that out. Okay. Right, so what can I do in this other section? Because I'm looking for another pattern here. I'd like something, I think I'd like a grid kind of pattern, I think. So if I go to tanglepatterns.com, I can have a look in the left hand sort of um, column. You can go to set select by tangled tangle type diamond grid. Let's have a look at a diamond grid. And they'll give you grids in various ways. So I'm looking for something that won't be too taxing for me today. None of those appeal. So if I go back there to grids, just go to grid. I'm going to choose a random number at the bottom. Go to number 10 and then hopefully I'll have some other numbers there. Okay, I'm just looking through this one very, very quickly. I'm sure I'll have done this one, but I love it. It's called Holly and it's by Linda Farmer and it is a lovely grid pattern. And I'm going to do my grid a bit on the wobbly wonky side, I think. That would work. So I've got <laughs> partial square here, partial squares everywhere. And I am going to put diagonal lines through them in a zigzag fashion. So I'm zigzagging along and down. So the first job is to pop the actual grid in because this one does have a grid. This is one of my favourite kinds of patterns like this. So there's my basic grid. Then I'm going to do each square one at a time because it's you draw the central line in, you imagine a point 
or a line that joins the points together, so here. And we'll put a, a dot there and a dot along that line. I was going to say about equidistant from the point, but because the squares are, or these shapes aren't perfectly square. And then we're going to join that dot to the other end of the line with a curved line. So it looks a bit like a very stylized holly leaf. Like this. So I'm going to put a dot there, a dot there, so that you can see here. And then I'll join that to that with a curve, and that to that with a curve, and repeat for the other side. So this one, I'm going to do partial curves, like so, because the rest of that leaf would disappear underneath out of the box. This one, I'm going to treat this as if they are, it's a full box. Like so. And then this one here. Again, I'll treat it as if it's a, a full box. An odd shape box. So I've got that. And then the embellishments. I've got choices. I often will pop, I'll draw the, this in pencil, leave it in pencil, and put berries in where these meet. But you can pop the berries in at the corners, like so. And if they meet the tip of the leaf, well, they meet the tip of the leaf. And I do like to add an aura inside. And then like so. And then I'm going to use my blue pen because that's consistent. And I'm just going to Actually, I think I might just colour this in with this lovely blue colour because that will tie this one with the um, the crazy and zeppel there. Part of me now is going, yeah, could have used that for the the veins on that flower. There we go. So we've got that there. And I quite like that. I like that with that um, board around. And I've got this one last section here to do. Now my thoughts turn to adding a quote, but I know that hand lettering isn't everybody's cup of tea. And um, I still haven't worked out the best way for me to do this. So let's have a look at perhaps doing something that is, let's have a look at an organic pattern. See if I can find something that I haven't done, but would like to do. Or if I've done these before, I will happily do these, do it again. Well, that's really pretty. There's a pattern here called Savannah and it's similar to stuff I've been doing. It's by um, Yvette Campbell CZT. And that's interesting. Okay, how would I approach this? You, I'm going to draw in shapes that I'm going to use for this. So I'm going to draw in something along the lines of um, like an, an arc here of some kind and I'm going to leave inside there basically empty and then what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to draw lines that go 
like this as if they're folded over. But you don't do every one of these as if it's coloured in black. You see here I'm starting to move the lines around as well. There we go. And I will pop an edge along the bottom and I'll use a thicker pen just to fill these ones in. Like so. To make a note of the names of these patterns and list them in the description. I know I can backtrack so it's not a problem. So we've got that and then we use this one to inform us where we're going to put the next. And I'm going to put my next one perhaps here, like so. And I will add, perhaps I'll add a bit further along. Yeah, that'll be nice. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to start to add some lines in between and then we have another one joined that one would be almost straight the lines would be in the middle and then they start to go in the opposite direction and we get done a very good job here of getting these to kind of curl over as if they're curled over an invisible line here. But that's the idea. And I'm going to put a dark one in on the edge here even though I've only got one line in between them because I think that would work fine. Thicker pen makes fast work of adding colour, filling them in. Which suits me, to be honest. And I will also join them in along the bottom to give a nice tidy edge. Like so. I just think it will be really interesting to grow this. So we've got this one here. I'm going to stop it like that, but I'll have the lines going. Like this. The more you do something, the more you work out how you can get an effect you like. So I really am beginning to emphasise how these lines curl over almost an invisible line that's there. You could draw the line in if you wanted to. I'm just being mindful as well of which ones I want to add black to because not everyone. Okay, so here I think I might have one perhaps growing out like this and using that edge there as a kind of guide to where these will.
So I'm starting to really hook these over that pencil line so that we can, it's giving that feeling that there is something supporting them. And here this one will be completely in black so let's have a look there. I also thought this would be quite a nice project to do over a number of videos because there's no way I'm going to fill the whole of this page in with you in one go. It's going to take me a few hours and uh, I may not complete another line in the time. It may take a, you know, a section or two, but this is, this is a lovely pattern. It's, it's interesting how you can fit it together, isn't it? Um, I think I'd kind of like one that goes in completely in this kind of direction, but like this. So it's echoing here. And let's see how that would work. So I'll put the sensual one in this time. couple on that side and then Just trying to get those hooks in. I'm not worried about the hooks on the edge. The bottom edge I should say because they We're giving them something to grow off, as it were. Though it's possible that you could repeat this way of forming the shapes at the bottom. Instead, it'd be like invisible poles or threads that they're wrapped around, supporting them. Some of these are a bit of an awkward shape and thickness, but it's that unfamiliarity with the pattern that's causing that. And then there's opportunities here. Like here is the perfect place to tuck one in like this. And perhaps some others as well. This one will be one that's filled in. And this one will be one that's filled in as well. And I'll just join those together there. And then here is going to be an interesting one because I am going to use all of this, but I won't have a curved path. I'll just have this going off the edge of the paper. Start to move it back the other way. So that's a really nice black, white, very graphic pattern. I like that. It's called Savannah 1V1A, N, even Savannah. I do like that. Brilliant for filling any space. And of course, you can make, you can vary how you. How you add the black and the white, or the black, the thick black lines and the lighter ones, thinner ones, depending on what you would like to achieve. 
And here I can just pop one in there just to finish that off. And that is my work here for today, just about. I want to give that a chance to dry. So I'm just going to go back over the others where I've added pencil line and just move that. I am going to just turn around momentarily. Not that you, it will make any difference to you, but I'm going to look for my, I've got powder blue, stone blue. None of those are blues, although I've got a cool grey, so I'll bring that one out. I've got a pile of markers here on the, out from my Artezas. Glacier blue, that's the one, not the cool grey. So I've got a range of lovely blues here. They're from the architectural um, set of Arteza Everblend markers. And I just think they will, there's a very good chance they're going to blend in quite nicely with these others. So if I start with um, this, I can't remember what the name is, but I will find it. And I'll put the information in the bottom. So I'm putting some shadow right at the, the base and around the edge. And I'm not making it a perfect line. I'm trying to just soften the edges that little bit. And I will pop some shadow where they overlap here, like so some shadow on the stems where they overlap and if I can get some down the left hand side like that I will. And these little beads I'm just going to pop some shadow at the bottom of them but I do want to go back with a slightly oh God, wrong end slightly darker blue powder blue just to darken the shadows right in the nooks and crannies and right round the edge, around the edges of these as well, just to intensify that idea of shadow. Now I'm going to pop it around the petals because they, I want them to appear they puff up and out down the side where they disappear under the edge of the paper as well. That needs a shadow. And I'll go back to the lighter one and just soften the edges of these as well. And I've just realised that this isn't marker paper, Angela. You should have some scrap paper underneath because the markers will go right the way through. So have I got any? Oh, we're OK. So I've got that and I've got this one here, which I will just add some darker colour underneath these just to get that idea of shadow going. Okay. And then I think the background of these I'm going to make quite dark in colour. I'm going to start dark at the bottom. Ooh, try the other way round. And I do want some paper I can pop underneath. Have I got some paper? Oh, I'm bound to have some paper somewhere. That'll do. So if the marker does go through, it's not going to stain my um, cutting mat here. Not that I use it for cutting, it's mainly for a background for working on. So it's a pretty colour, it's a nice calm colour. I love my silicon mats, the brightly coloured ones, but they are just a bit bright. Whereas this is a softer sort of like um, bluey green kind of colour. So I am going to get some darkish colour going on here. And then I'm going to go to a slightly lighter. I've got no excuse for taking the wrong top off. It's just that I'm just not paying attention to what I'm doing. So here I'm using quite a bit. This is bleeding out of the side, but it is what it is. And I'll live with this. Just add some lighter there. Trying not to add too much of, of ink. But uh, if the worst comes to the worst, I'll find 
once it's dried I'll use a blender pen or I will just thicken the black line to disguise it. That actually works quite nicely I think. It does doesn't it? I think so. It looks very dark on the camera. I have got the light on so perhaps if I increase the contrast to lighten things up. Okay. There we go. Or exposure and then it shows it up a little bit better. It's looking okay. Right then. So round the end zeppels, again it's I'm going to put shadows kind of to the left and the bottom. And they will be just that little bit wider at the rounded point, which I'm fine with. And in places I may have the the shadow going in the wrong direction. I also want to put shadow in underneath the around the edge of the box. And here we can do the same. It's the left and bottom. And some of them might have an awful lot of shadow on them where they're not just shadowed from them being a rounded shape, but perhaps shadowed because they overlap other things or other things overlap them. So there's some shadow going on there. So I want the next darkest just to come in right on the right on the very edge. Just put some of the slightly darker blue just to darken that shadow up in the bottom corner and along the bottom edge a little bit along the left though but I want to make it get thinner and then thicker if we can that one just took it over because I went a bit too far in I'm making use here of the fact I have added um, the colour to the little gaps in between because I can um, maybe go back and just add some alcohol marker to that just to even the colour out and darken it that little bit. And there we've got those and that looks, they do look very kind of, um, yeah. Puffy. Right, this one, I'm just going to pop shadows right along the edge here and here. So I've done those quite dark on this edge. And then I have, I've used a slightly darker blue than I wanted to. But it is what it is now. And I'll use the powder blue there, along the edge there, which will help to blend and soften that. And I won't use the lightest blue. I'm going to leave that as it is. And I actually think I might do the same kind of thing here with this, where I'm just going to pop the darker colour in the bottom left corner. So I am using a slightly darker colour than I did for the um, Crazy and Zeppel. And then I'm going to come back with the paler colour and they will blend one into another, but not the palest. So I'm going to get a slightly more intense shadow this way because I'm using slightly darker colours or more saturated colours, whichever way you want to look at it. Darker, I think. More saturated, who knows. This paper is actually really lovely for blending. These these markers do blend nicely on here. The problem is they also bleed outwards too much. So that one has got much stronger shadows than this one, which is nice to see and nice to compare. For this one here, for the holly, I think I am going to colour in backgrounds now 
This one I've done to the left and the bottom. Shall I do them all that way? Now I think I'll take the squares in diagonals. So I'll do this one where I've got these. And then I'm going to colour these in. That's right, it's a better idea, it's a good plan because I've forgotten that some of these um, leaves don't go right out to the corner, to the little berries that are there. So have I got... I, that'll be fine. And then I'll take a lighter colour. Let's go with the ocean blue. No, let's go with powder blue, something that's much not, you know, a couple of tones lighter and then I can just pop that in and we'll get a, a kind of grid pattern going on as well it'll emphasize the sort of like the fragments but where the fragments meet we're getting almost like a leaf shape going on in some of these and um, I'm going to leave Everything else as it is, the berries white and so on for now. Okay, this should have dried enough now. I'm going to be careful not to erase the guidelines of the next row down that we'll do. All right, so I've got these. Now then, I'm going to use that medium blue because I think I want to get just have a look and see I definitely want to put shadow at the bottom of all of these and I'm going to I'm likely to intensify this So I definitely want it to feel as if the bottoms are further away than the top. Down the side here, I'll just put some like that. But I also feel that I need to do some around the top. But I'm not joining the top of these lines. I am looking at where those hooks go under. And I'm joining these the bottom of the hooks up as much as I can. I do have a bit of a problem here because this ink bleeds, but that is my intention, is to try to keep this underneath those hooks. Like so. And then we have a shadow at the top there. I think I want the one at the bottom to be deeper and deeper in tone, so I'm going to go to a slightly darker marker here. Again, I can come back and blend this out in a moment with that lighter one. Perhaps I will just move this up that little bit making perhaps a bit deeper than they are. I'm trying, perhaps emphasizing the, keeping them in the white bits more. So I'll go back to that slightly lighter blue, gray. And just blend the edges. So, and like so, and then perhaps I'll just add a little bit more of the colour to the top in places. So, I want that a bit of a feathery, raggedy edge there, and I am going to use the lightest blue just to blend the edge of these. Top and bottom. 
just to help is that if you like the harsh line or the you know the strong line at the edge of the shadow you don't have to do this um, it's your choice it's your work and if you're using um, a pencil and a tortillon then you wouldn't have to do that so that is the first row on this particular um, sketchy thing. So I've used some Everblend markers in blues. I've used a selection of... Did I use no one? I did use no one, didn't I? And I used um, this as well. So I've used a selection of pens as well as this one. And I didn't use any of the others, did I? No. So, and it's all fairly monochrome and I quite like that. Now part of me wants to do something about these here because I've gone, no, no, I'm all right. I'm not entirely sure whether I want to do something about the background that's here because I, th I don't think that works. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fix it. I think I'm gonna to have to fix it by coloring it all in the same color. So while I'm at it, let me just do that. Because that it doesn't, there's not enough. There aren't enough squares for this to really work. I think that's the problem. I think I know how I can help to bring some things out, which I'll do now. I was going to finish, you see, but I look back and I think that's not right. That's not working for me. But I think you know, something came to me, and I think oh, I think I can make that work. I do hope you're going to give this a go as a way of organising, you know, ideas in your sketchbook. It's just an extension, really, of the little boxes we, I started off at the beginning of this week. No, that's not. That's just muck. OK, so what I thought I'd do is I haven't used a white gel pen at all. So let me just clean this up. I'm doing that off camera because... Uh, Sometimes you just need, need that. What I'm going to do here is, where these meet, I'm going to draw a leaf shape in as an extra aura around the holly leaf. But I'm going to do it in white. So it stands out. And if the white lines cross the black, I'll just go back and use a black pen just to colour over them. I quite like that and I'm quite tempted to do this now inside. The worst that happens is I have to go back and colour over it. So that, that lightens that up quite a bit. I said, I'm going to go back and just use an O3. And I'm going to put the black lines back in, tidy the edges of these up. In the past, I would have panicked about doing this. Did you know, do you know that? As in, panicked about adding white and going over black lines. I don't know how it's taken me so long to realise that I can just draw over and correct it, tidy and neaten things up. It's that idea that everything has to be perfect first go, that you can't correct anything. Well, yeah, you can. Or at least you can alter it so it looks, you know, better than it did, I suppose. Or And I quite like that, having the lines going through the white now to show that up. So that's overly complicated, that pattern, but I quite like that. The other thing I want to do while I've got the white gel pen out is I am going to put white inside these little dots down here. I'm going to put a white highlight in there. I will pop some white dots across the highlighted area of these 
leaves. And if they break the white, the black pen up, that's fine because I deliberately broke the black pen up on these ones, didn't I? So we need more white in the areas that the highlight will be greatest, which is towards the top of the leaf like that. And that works nicely. I can do the same with the Enzeppel, perhaps putting some white highlights, little dots towards the, you know, towards the center, but the sort of top right center, not the exact center. So, but not to the edge really because you'd have that sloping down and that would be in some shadow so the white dots will suggest there's a shadow around here but I quite like the dots they're um they break it up and suggest a more a rougher surface I could pop some you know darker dots in at the bottom but I'm not going to With these ones, I'm going to put a kind of arrangement of dots along the top and then in a bit, almost like a square within that, that area of highlight, just to bring that highlight out just that bit more, like so. Along here, I'm going to put dots right along the edge just to intensify that highlight. I'll leave the colour of the paper there as the background, so we've got that. And here, I'm going to... I can see where the highlight is here. It's the area I haven't added colour to, so I'm just going to add white dots in a band, just a sprinkle, sprinkling them so that we get... and across the black as well so that everywhere gets that bit of a highlight. I prefer this than using white chalk or charcoal, but if that's what you like using, then feel free to do what you like. Just because I do it this way doesn't mean you have to do it as well. Um, I'm sharing with you what I love to do, and if that helps you or informs you or helps you, gives you ideas of things to try, or helps to solidify well actually that's nice but I prefer my way or I like what I'm doing and that's perfectly fine as well because we all need that a healthy comparison with work is that mine's not any worse than yours but I like what I do and I'm not going to feel bad about mine because I don't work like you. There's a fantastic book. It's by a well, series of books, actually, by Austin Cleon. And he's got a really good look on, on art and so on. The first book is called Steal Like an Artist. And it's about what woke him up or helped him understand things about art is that I can't remember who, who the quote was by. Um, and I, though I've got the physical book somewhere, I was listening to it on an, as a, an audio book while I was working. And it was that there's nothing new under the sun, not even in art. And I think that's quite right. So, you know, but when you say you steal like an artist is you don't copy, but you use things as a source of inspiration. So I said the inspiration for these, you know, yesterday or the, the day before, I showed them yesterday, was because I saw some work by Rebecca Blair and thought, oh my gosh, I love your work, but it's never dawned on me that this could be a good idea of doing things. And then I thought, well, hang on. You know, eventually the penny dropped. Actually, I do something similar with colouring pages. And so, you know, it's that kind of thing where you just go, yeah, duh. So there's nothing new, and this isn't new. You get little panels like this in medieval manuscripts going back. And the use of pattern, it's, the patterns are often archetypal. They, they've existed for a very long time in human history, but we all put our own little spin on them. And so I think, and our own flavor, our own unique way of drawing things. Um, some people like to 
work in super realistic hyper perfectionism. I like to work in non-representational, very stylized, very whimsical kind of art. And I think that's fine as well. And Zentangle patterns have their appeal because I love pattern. But I tried to put my own little spin on them. I think I've made a mess of this one here, to be honest with you. But it is what it is for now. And as this is a sampler for a sketchbook of ideas, then this is how it's staying. So I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me. I can't believe it's another over hour long video. I really shouldn't do videos when I'm not feeling exactly well because I think I procrastinate by doing them instead of getting on with work. But, um, but at the same time, I'm also glad I've spent this time. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for um, sticking through to the bitter end, hopefully. And uh, that you have a go at doing things like this for your sketchbook. And I'll be back in my next video, which will be Monday, most probably the 13th. And um, most probably with the next section. I'm going to keep this for videoing. I've got sneaky suspicions some other pages will turn up like this. Especially if I lose the will to work <laughs> later on. So for now, take care of yourselves. And no matter what else. Find time to be creative, not find, make time to be creative and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye. Ta -ra.